and welcome to TL Physics and today I am going to talk about the life cycle of a star up to red giant or red super giant. Now at GCSE you may have had this before where you had to identify the key parts of the life cycle of a star but there's something quite important between the main sequence star and the red giant or red super giant that at A level you need to be aware of. So what I'm focusing on in this video is the journey from nebula to, uh, to protostar, to main sequence, to uh, either a red giant or a red supergiant. In my next video, I will talk about what happens to a star that's gone the red giant route, and another video I'll talk about the red supergiant route. First of all, I want to introduce you to something that may be a new concept, but it's this whole idea of radiation pressure. Now a star, okay, emits photons. And with this, okay, these photons emit energy, and as we know, photons can exhibit both particle and wave-like properties. It's the particle side I'm actually quite interested in. And because it can exert a, a force, it can also exert a pressure. So what actually happens is that stars, when they emit um, energy, they emit um, what we call radiation pressure. And I'm going to label this here. So this is radiation pressure. Okay, so this is radiation pressure. Now, stars also own mass, which means that here we have gravity or gravitational force pulling it in. And a star's life it's all about this fine balance between the radiation pressure going out and gravity trying to pull it in. And the st stages of a star's life is dictated about this balance between each one. Okay. So let's start with the, no the beginning and we're going to start at a nebula. Nebulas are also known as stellar nurseries. And this is where there are regions of dust and particles and atoms whizzing around. Now, if they start to move around, in uh, a formation, they start to attract each other due to the force of gravitation, um, they start to clump together. And as more and more and more add up, the force of gravitation gets bigger and they start squeezing together. And eventually, eventually, they might have enough gravitational force to squeeze them together to enable them to fuse. And it's this point here that these, from this nebula, becomes a protostar. Now, a protostar is a star that has literally just been able to fuse hydrogen. Now, if it can sustain that fusion, it will then either absorb the nebula or leave the nebula and become what we call a main sequence star. However, if it cannot maintain the actual um, fusion um, interaction, it will collapse and just go off into the nebula again, waiting for another chance to become a protostar and then maybe a main sequence star. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look here, and I'm going to grab some numbers out of a book. And I'm going to look at the amount of energy that is released through um, the fusion of hydrogen. Okay, so we'll just go to page 209 of this book. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just write the equation. So I'm going to talk about the fusion of hydrogen um, two and hydrogen three, so known as deuterium and tritium, together to make helium. So He2 plus, oh no, He, hydrogen two plus hydrogen three goes to helium four two plus a neutron. Okay, and the information I've got here is about binding energy. So I know the binding energy per nucleon for hydrogen two is 1.11. MeV. For helium 4,2, I know it is 7.07 uh, .07 MeV. And I know for hydrogen 3, it is 2.83 MeV. Okay. And I want to work out how much energy is going to be emitted. So what I need to do into my calculation here is... I've got, this is per nucleon, so this is binding energy per nucleon. Okay. 
okay? And what's going to happen here? So this is per nucleon. Hydrogen has two nucleons, so it's going to be 2 times 1.11 plus 3 times 2.83 goes to 4 times 7.07. 7. And then a neutron does not have any binding energy. And what I'm trying to do is balance the formula. Now, I don't really care if this number is positive or negative in this case. Uh, what I'm really looking for is this change in energy. And if I add these two together and find out what that is, I need to take away this energy here. It's going to be minus 17.6 MeV. So the energy released is 17.6 MeV. The reason it's a negative number is just because it's energy released from the actual atom itself, which is why it's negative, because binding energy is looking inside the atom. If this number is ever positive, that means energy was absorbed, and that is important later on when we talk about supernova. Okay? So that there is the hydrogen uh, to deuterium and tritium fusing together to make helium. So this is the kind of um, energy we're looking at. Now, if we find the star requires more energy um, than it actually, to actually fuse than it's actually outputting, that's when it doesn't become main sequence. It fails and it becomes uh, just goes back into the nebula. If it can maintain this rate of fusion, it will become a main sequence star. And a main sequence star is where a star will spend most of its life. Now, what happens when the hydrogen runs out? Okay. So what happens when the hydrogen runs out is the important part of um, this uh, concept here, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about going from a red sequence to a red super or a red giant. And it's this thing that sets this apart from GCSE. So what happens when the hydrogen runs out? So this is, what, this is, what ha this is the trigger point for the main sequence becoming a red giant or a red supergiant, is first of all, the hydrogen in the core runs out. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about there's only helium left to burn. So let's just do a bit of maths here. I'm going to have helium for two plus a little bit of hydrogen it might have found, going to lithium-5,3 plus a neutron. So I already know the binding energy per nucleon for this one and this one, because I've got them here. So I've got 4 times 7.07 .07 plus 2 times 1.11. Lithium has got a binding energy, lithium-5 has got a binding energy per nucleon of 5.26 MeV. So it goes to 5 times 5.26, and then plus 0, plus energy. So let's actually have a look at this here. So 7.07, .07, 7 times 4 is 28, plus that, so it's 28.28, plus 2. Point Four times seven. Oh, yeah, yeah, twenty-eight plus two point two two goes to five point two six. So that's going to be five. I'm going to grab a calculator. Hold on two seconds. I have misplaced my calculator today, which is never good. That ah, there it is. Ah. Sorry about this. So this side I've got four times seven point zero seven. Twenty-eight point two eight plus 2.22, so on this side I have a grand total of 30.5, and on this side I've got 5, 5 times 5.26, which is 26.3, okay. Um, so the difference between here, here and here, I've got 30 point Thirty point five minus twenty six point three, which is four point two MeV of energy. 
So that is how much energy would be released here, okay? So as you can see, this is much, much lower than the 17.6 MeV that I had there, okay? I'm just gonna rub that out. So that there is what's happening. The hydrogen in the core runs out. So what we have is hydrogen, Hydrogen in the core runs out, which then means, going back to this idea of solar radiation pressure, because I'm releasing less energy, the radiation pressure goes down, which means gravity wins. So radiation pressure drops. Therefore, core contracts. When this contracts, the core becomes hotter, okay, which allows it to fuse bigger elements. Okay, so it becomes hotter to be able to fuse these bigger elements. Now, while this is happening, the corona, the outer layer of the star, so the outer layer does the opposite. So while the core is contracting, the outer layer, due to um, the energy that's being released from the higher uh, temperature core, plus a bit of Newton's third law, will, ex uh, will expand out. So the outer layer expands. Okay. So the outer layer will expand here and <clears throat> this then causes this red giant i have got a core that's really really hot emitting a very lots of power so the core is hot emitting lots of power under a very uh, large surface area and if I use Stefan's law which is power equals Stefan's constant at to the 4 if the temperature of the star is going up and the air is going up the power is going to be up and this is why they are very 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 bright okay but the core is the hot part the corona is actually cooling down Okay, because it's getting further away from the core. So the core is hot, that's emitting a lot of power, and a large surface area. This is why they appear red. Okay, and that, of course, is because of Vine's law. So lambda max t equals 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3 meters Kelvin. So the reason it's giant is because of the large surface area. The reason it is red is because of Vine's law here. Okay, and that makes sense. The temperature's gone down, which means the wavelength has to get bigger to keep this constant. So that's what's actually happening. The core is contracting because it's run out of fuel. It's not going to be emitting enough energy, enough radiation pressure to maintain. So gravity wins and it shrinks. It gets hotter, so it emits more power. But the outer corona, because of Newton's third law, it actually starts to get further away from the core. So it's emitting more power over a bigger surface area, which means it's going to look really bright, which is why we call them giants. The reason we call them red giants is because that outer layer is further away from that really hot core, so its temperature has decreased. This outer corona, the thing of the star we see, which means, because of Vine's law, the temperature goes, the temperature's gone down, which means the wavelength must get bigger, which is why they appear red. So that there is the star, from a star starting at nebula, joining together to become a protostar, and potentially going into being a main sequence star, and how, because it runs out of hydrogen, the core collapsing, causing the corona to go further away means that we get these red supergiants or these red giants. In my next video, I'm going to be talking about how we go from a red giant to 
beautiful white dwarf. And in the video, <coughs> the video after that, I'll be talking about how to go from red supergiants to supernova.